What is up everybody? This is Kevin Strikerman Stubbyman from Gaming at IU. I'm here to show you how to create a tournament with our new tournament functionality on the website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and make sure that you're logged in, click the Add Content button under Navigation on the right side. We've got a couple different kinds of tournaments here that you can create. You can create a tournament bracket if you'd like. That's just a standalone bracket. You don't really need to worry about it uh, unless you just want one for some reason for a different kind of tournament. You've got the knockout tournament, which is just your normal kind of single double elimination tournament. Have ladders, which you can either do a ELO tournament for the ladder or just a normal leveling system for the ladder. You can create an individual match if you just want to go ahead and challenge one specific person, like friend or something, but you don't really want to do it in a tournament setting. You can create a round robin as well. And then there's just the normal tournament, which is basically just a sign up for some kind of weird tournament that doesn't necessarily fall under any of this other stuff. I'm not going to go over the tournament or the match or the round robin for now, as they're pretty self explanatory once you've done the other stuff. First, we're going to go ahead and create a knockout tournament. Now, this is also pretty self explanatory and pretty simple once you do it, but just go ahead and run through it here real quick. Go ahead and name your tournament, whatever you want. Go with test bracket. Set your start date. You can go ahead and choose whatever date you want and just choose today. And we'll choose 2130 since it was there. You can set up to a 1024 player tournament. That's going to take a while. But, you know, all the way down to four, we'll do that for now. You can choose either a team tournament, like something like TF2 or League of Legends, or you can do a user tournament for something like StarCraft, etc. Now, in the body down here, this is where the rules are going to go, any kind of specific time stuff that you want to put in there, basically anything you want people to know about your tournament. Now you can do this in WYSIWYG so you can make it look all pretty if you want. You can also choose filtered HTML or plain text down below there, and that just kind of changes how you enter what you enter. Up back here in the settings, we have the knockout settings, which is the specific stuff for single or double elimination. You can obviously choose either way. You can do either include the third place or don't include third place. If you're only worried about who's first and second, you don't really need it. I'll go ahead and uncheck that for this right now and do it as single elimination. Sign up settings. This will be the same across all the different tournament types, but basically allow people to sign up. Probably a good idea. You can password protect this, tourna this tournament if you just want friends to do it or something like that. You can set a deadline for people to sign up by. If you do that, or the password, it just drops down the extra stuff there. You can choose the deadline by, let's say, the past right now. So you can also choose specific roles, but you're not going to be worried about that unless you're an admin, or we in the future add some kind of functionality where you can set up custom roles for your friends or something like that, which we may do. If you go to advanced settings, people can enter their own scores for their own matches. That, the only reason you'd want to get rid of that is if you're worried about people kind of entering the wrong score just to gain an advantage. And then the admin of the tournament is the only one who can enter a score at that point. Show the participant list. If you ever want to hide who's in the tournament for any reason, you can uncheck that. Don't really see any need to, though. Allow user to request new match dates. That is basically when you first have the match set up, you'll get a time and a date. If that doesn't work for you, it lets you request a new date and time. That works better for you if you don't have class at that time, etc. And then you can go back and forth and request new dates until you get a good date. Or you can just jump on a Skype or Facebook or whatever and just ask each other. For the alias, you can basically make that whatever you want for the tournament. Probably a good idea to make it whatever your tournament name is or something similar. But basically that'll show up as iugaming.com slash t for tournaments slash whatever you put in that box. So let's go ahead and create our tournament here. So we got the tournament now created. I'm going to go ahead and sign up for it with my testy man account here. Go ahead and click sign up. Now I can't start it yet because I don't have enough people, so I'm going to go ahead and jump over onto my other account here, Striker Man. Don't mind the bracket there. That's just what it's going to look like after we sign up. So if you click on the events tournament drop down, and that's just you mouse over events, you get the little tournament drop down, you'll see your teams listed over here to the left and tournaments listed here. So what we're going to do is go into the test bracket. And you see there's testy man there. I'm going to go ahead and sign up for this. 
Now this is an admin account, so I have the start tournament, uh, but basically normally only the admin of the tournament will be able to start it. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it on this account. Oh, we need three. Unfortunately, we don't have three people on right now, and I don't have three accounts open. But basically, what I'll do is go ahead and show you what it'll look like after you start the tournament, because I already have one started. Go back to the tournaments here. We have a test bracket tournament that is in progress. So basically what that's going to look like after you start it, it's going to create the bracket here, and it'll give you an option for uh, either do it manually, you can set the seeds, or do it randomly. And you can see the third place match there is T-Bone Man versus no one because there was a buy. But basically, so you have the bracket gets updated as you report matches. The match was already reported here as Striker Man 1, T-Bone 0, as you can see there. You can click on the match details, get a little bit of a more in-depth view of what went on. If there was more stuff back and forth down there, that would have more information. Go ahead and click back. And so as you can see, you know, pretty nice little layout for the tournament bracket. This will obviously be a lot bigger uh, for a larger tournament. You can go to full screen if you want and basically just get a much larger view. Not really needed for this tournament, but for the LAN, you're definitely going to want to see that. And that does auto-refresh every minute. If you'd like to link to that, you can click that and then you can share the link there. Or if you want to just do it as an iframe onto a website, for any reason you have your own personal website and you want to link the tournament bracket there, you can do that. So that is how you create a bracketed tournament. Now if you go down to add content again, go ahead and just show you the difference. Uh, actually let me do this on the other account because that has too much stuff for the admin. Go ahead and add content there and let's do a ladder. So basically this is all going to be the same stuff here. You can choose the size, this is just you type it in, or you can leave it blank to have no limit. The only real differences in here are going to be the ladder settings. And again, you got the ELO and then the level system. Duration, how long the ladder is going to run for. And then match limit. And what you can do, because sometimes people are going to be jerks and just kind of report wins over their friends 10,000 times. If you want to stop that, Hopefully you don't have to, but you can go ahead and set a match limit for every 24 hours. The same two participants can only play this many times. You can set it to no limit, though, if you trust people. And then you can also force the highest rank participant to accept challenges. So, basically, you don't have somebody winning. Oh, I'm top. Now I'm never going to play again, so I'm top the whole time. That doesn't happen because any time they get challenged, they have to accept it or they just take a loss. As far as the sign up and advanced settings, same stuff. Body, same stuff. And then you can create the tournament, and that will show up again in the tournaments list. I'm not going to create this one because I already had a lot of tests up here. But basically, go into test ladder here, which is in progress. Actually, let me go to the other ladder here, tester tournament, because that has a couple different people in it. So, as you can see, Striker Man and Testy Man here. This is how it's going to show up for however many people are in the tournament. You got the match history down here. You can sort it by active, finished, and then my matches, which doesn't really do anything since it's all my matches. But, uh, you know, once you get a lot of people playing, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, filter that down. And basically, when you're in the ladder after you join, you can click challenge to go ahead and challenge whoever you want on that list. You can set the match date there and a comment, whatever you want. Come at me, bro and then send challenge. Now what happens there is they will get an email with that challenge. And let me pop back over to this other screen and go to my email and go to index. Whoop, that's the match result. Haven't quite gotten it. But when they do get the email, uh, it'll show up as an email like this. I have the date and time. And then you can respond to the request by clicking on the link in the email. That will actually not show up for a little while because for some reason it's a little laggy with Gmail. But basically once that goes in, you can go into the challenge and then report the results that way. Uh, basically when you report the results, it'll send it to the other person to go ahead and make sure that, yes, I'm not lying. And then once they confirm that, it'll finalize the result and you'll get your results here in the ladder and in the matches. Anyways, that's how you create the ladder and the bracket matches uh, for the tournaments. So if you have any questions about how to create those tournaments or if you want to create a round robin and just kind of want some help with that, 
feel free to catch me at the LAN. I'll be probably walking around all over the place like crazy chicken with his head cut off, but just feel free to grab me. If you have any questions when you're not at the LAN, before or after, go ahead and just ask on the forum or on Facebook, either one, and I'll try to get to you as fast as I can. Anyways, thank you for watching how to create a tournament. I'm going to go ahead and put up another video about how to create teams and join tournaments and a little more information just kind of generally about how the tournaments are going to work at the event. Thank you. and.